But I'm going to ask Karan to comment a little bit because he is the most prominent discoverer of talent, I think, globally. And, uh, you know, Karan, if you could take a few minutes to kind of opine on two things, right? One is the discovery of talent that this portal can do, and two is what is going to be the impact of content creation when a portal like this gives you accessibility to talent globally? Um, firstly, I think uh, in the zone of casting vis -vis, uh, movies, I think a lot has changed and uh, in the last decade specifically. Uh, I think there was a zone in the 80s and 90s, which I think Prahlad was referring to about the useless relatives. Uh, but I think, uh, uh, fortunately, I never had any useless relatives, so I didn't have to bring them onto celluloid at all. Uh, but uh, um, I, I do understand what he probably means is nepotism, which I think is fairly active in the film fraternity, and that's something that we have to acknowledge and accept on all levels. Uh, but I think recently, and I think Ashutosh will share that with you, and especially directors like Ashutosh have done some, um, some fantastic, uh, you know, supporting casting, and that have actually gone on to create memorable characters. And in the last decade, I've noticed the, um, I, I would say, the initiation of the casting director who has acquired prominence. There is actually, it used to otherwise be something very ad hoc. Just like Ashutosh said, he used to go on and, you know, kind of look at regional television. All of us used to kind of do the same thing. Uh, you know, we used to go on television or we used to go and just see what, who were in other movies. It wasn't really a, a structured network created in the zone of casting, which has been a recent phenomenon. And I think now the casting director actually has acquired um, frontline credit and also does, and so many of them have been responsible, be it Mukesh Chhabra or be Shanu Sharma, uh, be it, uh, I think recently the casting of Urta Punjab, which I say, Hani Trehan, I think who did a phenomenal job. Uh, these are actors that there is no way that you can actually know anything about unless it's a structured uh, process. Similarly, so with what you've introduced has, has taken that structure and given it more definite structure. So I think it's completely fantastic and one doesn't need to depend on nepotism to get talent on celluloid now. You could find it, you know, in theatres, you could find it in regional cinema, you could find it on digital formats, you could find it on television shows. Uh, and it will all be kind of streamlined with your concept and I think it's phenomenal. How does it change and create content was your second question. Well, obviously I think that um, when you do find the kind of exceptional talent that is available to you through the digital format, uh, it of course makes you think and create characters and makes you kind of change things and you don't follow the conventional path of um, creativity. I think it does give you an open windows and doors as I said earlier um, and I'm, I'm vastly excited about the possibilities. A lot has changed and I think it's, it's time for us to acknowledge that as well in the movies. I think we're not making the kind of content that we used to. There is a, a paradigm shift in terms of what we want to project our cinema to be. There will always be the mainstream, there will always be the playing to the gallery, but there is also so much unusual filmmaking that is going on that is finding a large acceptance. Uh, then similarly, like what, uh, you know, I think, uh, uh, what you said about Samir, like, you know, there is so much digital television about it, there are web series, there are so many formats and portals that can actually take our entertainment and give it a totally different, uh, different color altogether. It's not just film. Film is not the be-all and end-all of anyone's existence. I keep saying that. That, you know, film is maybe aspirational, film is like the big screen medium, but let me tell you, there is a large diminishing effect of the power of film. It will always remain as the mother of all entertainment. It'll all, celluloid will always have its charm. We can't call it celluloid anymore, actually, it's digital. So that, that <laughs> itself kind of kills a certain aspect. But I mean, everything is moving to different formats. If you go to America, I mean, what, what is, barring the big event film, the franchise film, or the adaptation of this tremendous book, uh, the, the, uh, the film, the regular film, has completely made its way to television. Right. Everything, everyone is watching. So there's so many opportunities that give so many opportunities to music, to actors, to all kinds of talent, that, you know, they shouldn't just feel like that, that bomb Mumbai and the film industry is your, is your big dream. It used to be the big dream. It's now... Not a nightmare, but it's definitely between a dream and a nightmare. <laughs> no, so, so, so no, we're, we're definitely betting. No, but is that uh, with the new formats and uh, the talent that you're actually going to have to play around with, you can actually layer your films. Yeah. So, you know, as a director, even if your content writer has made it unidimensional, when you actually deal with your talent on the floor, 
and they give you five options on the same character in terms of the running role, you start making your content far more complex because you don't make it for the lowest common denominator. You know, you make it much more sophisticated, you make it much more complex, and that is what actually good casting is all about. It gives the director such a lot of options to actually take the basic content and layer it. Yeah. And layering is actually going to be what is going to be the future. Yeah. So I want to just pose one uh, kind of question to Samir, sir. Uh, jitna reality shows ban rahe abhi, India mein, how does this impact the auditions for that? Because once I had the fortune of actually going to one of these auditions that a cousin was doing in Jaipur, line itni lambi hai. How, how does this help you guys? But actually, you see, there are, one is about the reality show auditions yeah. is that there's a thrill in doing that, yeah. as into going to the right. cities and having the big lines sure. because that makes a good television. <laughs> and it, no, it looks nice, it shows yeah. the whole city is activated. <coughs> but what it does, most importantly, is that, of course, something like this um, allows a lot more people to participate, uh, a lot more people to you know, sort of send in their entries, um, whether they are freaks or whether they are genuinely talented, but either way, <laughs> it's a you know, real opening it up. Right. And uh, the more important thing, just to echo what Karan is saying, is that in the next, now in the now in the few years, yeah. this whole content business is going to explode. Yeah. And it's like a monster that needs to be fed. Yeah. It needs talent, it needs lots of new talent. And while movies is, you know, like the gold standard, but everything else in the business, whether TV or online or events or, you know, just performances, or anything. advertising. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, 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 I mean, I think to echo a little bit what Karan was saying earlier, you know, uh, films is the granddaddy of them all, as they call the Rose Bowl in the U.S., but, um, and, and it is, it is, you know, there's a massive style factor to it, but for a platform like this, we definitely believe that digital content, at ad films, um, and, and then television is going to be the biggest platform that it can be in terms of people that come on and post their profiles. So, uh, with that being said, I th I'm going to open it up to the audience a little bit for a few questions and then to the media. So... Uh, where's our first question here? You know, uh, I want to add one Yes, thing. sir. Is that in your, um, uh, what do you call, format, there's one small missing point. See, the biggest hurdle that we have today, as far as entertainment is concerned, is content writers. Okay, there is, I find no space or a area to perform for content writers. Yeah. Because <coughs> first we underpay them, we don't treat them with the due respect that they get everywhere else in the world. And so not too many young content writers want to be content writers. They actually prefer to be directors. Yes. So when you find a content writer who's even halfway, what you call talented, he says, I don't want to write for somebody else. I want to write for myself. I want to be a director. So directors are given a haloed position. Content writers actually have no place even on your format. So, so, to so actually display a, themselves. Yeah, so the, just, a, just a slight correction on that, sir. The last piece that was in the demo was upload your own script or upload your own content. So we made a very conscious effort actually to focus on that, right? Which is the world is just not about actors and, and actresses and dancers and DOPs. It's, they're only really as good as the content that you give them to perform on, on right? No, but see, you have to understand one thing. The uh, film industry as such is relatively illiterate. Nobody reads. Nobody reads. So you have to actually narrate a script. So when you say upload your script, it's going to go into the bin. When you turn around and say narrate your script, that's a different format altogether. I think, Pranad, lots has changed. I think you're still, like yeah, Karan says, you're talking about the 80s and the 90s. No, Things but nobody have reads, uh, even now. I, I don't know, at least for the films I do Everybody as a composer. Everybody give me a narration. <laughs> it's not true. I, I think it's, uh, there's this very small percentage now that doesn't read. I mean. At least from my knowledge, from my experience, as of now, a lot of people read. Even film composers who normally, like, situation kya hai bata do aur hum log gana karenge. Even they have, they've been given scripts and one reads this, I mean, at least I do. No, no, among the film fraternity, I mean, uh, the music fraternity, they've definitely learned how to write music Sunday. And, you know, they're not sort of taking it off the top of the head or lifting it from the bells. Which, which used to be the practice. Right. So I find that there, there's a difference there. There are people who read, mm. but I, I don't think even now in the mainstream film industry, writing is the best way to get through to anybody. Yeah. They all want a narration. Yeah. So, so I think we're gonna do our best we can to actually make that come alive on the platform. And I think that's great feedback, sir. You should have a, a little section where you can just upload a narration. 
I think I'm just going to have an artificial. Yeah, I'm going to have an artificial. You know, I'm going to have an like artificial intelligence thing that can actually read the script that you put up there. That's pretty good. Verbally. And also, just a suggestion. I mean, yeah, just on a, a soft course. note that you know, if uh, if there is some way you can send a friend request internally oh, within TN, that's interesting. so I can be friends with a singer. <clears throat> I can be friends with a composer within TN. Yes, sure. You know. So it's a cool way to just yeah, interact. No, yes, Salim, that's, of, you're, yes, you're, that builds the fraternity. You've yet. actually, it, you, you, this, you've this actually talked of, about the next evolution of our product, yeah, this which kind is of to build builds, a network. This sort of builds, yeah. uh, you know, so when, when people see pictures and they can, even though I'm a composer, I'd like to see a picture of a singer. Right. I mean, apart from just right, working sure. or a picture of the sure. actor and sort of, you know, be friends bounce with. Bounce off ideas. Yeah, yeah. so it's nice. It, you just create a community yeah. within TN. No, and, 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 and that's the holy grail for us, Salim, is, is the idea, the, the ethos of this is not just around discovery of talent and content creation and eventual casting, but it's really creating a network of like-minded people, as we say often, uh, to be able to interface within themselves. And the next evolutions that you'll see of our platform in the next, you know, six to nine to 12 months is actually gonna give you exactly that. And I think, particularly for your industry, that interaction continuously of the global genre of music that's out there is very critical, is very critical. So questions, where are the mics here? Uh, sure, go for it. Do you think, do good, I think looks good looks overpower talent? talent? Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's. Uh, uh, I don't know what your concept of good looking is. It could be different from mine. But uh, I, I think if I use the word conventional, I think the biggest superstars of this country probably don't conform to traditional and conventional good looks. So obviously to answer that question, I don't think it has anything to do with the way you look because you know, beauty just stops at a point and talent has to take over. Right. Because there's no, you can't, beauty as you know, um, and no matter how poetic we get about beauty, after a point it does fade. And talent has to take over because <laughs> eventually, I mean, if you're not talented, I don't think you can stand a chance on any entertainment format. So I think we had a question up there. Hello? Yeah. Hi. Good afternoon. Uh, Mr. Ashtosh, my question is directed to you. Um, you started your career with acting and then ventured into multiple things. So how important do you think it is today for a talent to uh, pitch a multiple skill set? Uh, no, I don't think a talent should uh, project too many things at a time. He needs to have one core uh, talent that he should project. And then go uh, to other things. The others can follow. Because if you don't have that focus, it also uh, kind of uh, deviates from what the employer is looking at. <coughs> you know, you don't want to be told that I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. And you're like, one sec, I just want, can you do this? I just want a singer or an actor. So I think, I think you should focus on one uh, strain first, one stream, and then open your wings. I can speak for myself when I say that we don't have a, a one casting director. Like I think Shanu casts only for YRF. I don't think that we have one, we work with multiple casting directors. So in that respect, I mean, if, if at all one does engage with this, uh, with this digital concept of casting, it, I mean, all doors at Dharma are open. You just have to get in touch with the EPs of the film. And uh, it's a very simple process, and we encourage that. At Dharma, I think we kind of keep an open democratic forum in any kind of vertical of the film. And we're not bound to one casting director for any film. We worked with about six of them in the last two years. So, you know, it's an, it's an open forum for us.